We all think we like surprises. Who doesn't love getting an A on a project created the night before it was due? But when it comes to major exams, surprises can be uber stressful. The best way to avoid test day trauma is to prep ahead of time. Hi, I'm Kyra, and I'm here to help by guiding you through the math section of the SAT. First, let's give you the lay of the land and talk formatting. The math test is made up of two sections. First, the math test with no calculator, which is 25 minutes long and has 20 questions. Then, the math test with a calculator, which is 55 minutes long and contains 38 questions. In each section, there will be two subsections, one multiple choice section and one grid in section. There will be 45 multiple choice questions and 13 grid in questions for a total of 58 questions. You might have paused at hearing grid in questions. It sounds a little intense, but actually it just involves one more step in how you enter your answers. The grid ins look like this. You'll have number bubbles for zero through nine, symbol bubbles for decimals, and slashes for fractions. You'll want to start by writing your answer, for example, 2.07 at the top. Then fill in the corresponding bubbles below. Make sure your bubbled answer matches what you hand wrote on top. Remember, what's bubbled in is the only thing that counts on the test. You may start your answers, for example, 44 in any column, space permitting. Columns not needed should be left blank. For grid ends, remember your answers are always going to be positive, but not always integers. That means no on negative numbers and yes on fractions. Speaking of which, fractions can be tricky because there are multiple ways of showing the same answer. Let's look at how we can enter two-thirds. You'll want to start by writing your answer, two-thirds, above the bubbles for your own reference. Then you'll bubble in two slash three. Another way to correctly express two-thirds is the decimal number 0 0.666. But since there's no zero in the leftmost column, you'd start with the decimal and write out 0.666, and then, you guessed it, bubble in 0.666. Or you can round the repeating decimal up to 0.667. Either option works, but for a repeating decimal, such as this one, be sure to use all the columns. For example, 0.67 would be considered less accurate and scored as incorrect. Also, never enter a mixed number on the answer sheet. Notice how 2 and 1 eighth, when entered on the answer sheet, looks like 21 eighths, which is incorrect. In this case, you represent the fraction not as a mixed number, but as an improper fraction. Convert your fraction by multiplying the denominator, 8, by 2 to get 16. Then add the numerator, which is 1, for a total of 17. Your denominator remains the same. So your improper fraction is 17 eighths. This will be written on the answer sheet as 1 7 slash 8. Now that you get how to grid in your answers, let's talk about one area of mercy the SAT writers give you on the test the formula box. The first thing you'll see at the beginning of every math section is a formula box, which provides some handy geometry formulas. You'll see the formulas to calculate circumference, area, volume, and special right triangles. Also, remember that every question is worth the same number of points regardless of difficulty. That means you want to focus on accuracy first and then speed. It doesn't matter if you get the two hardest questions right if you miss all of the easy questions. By practicing, you'll get more comfortable with what's on the test and you'll naturally get faster. In the interest of building accuracy, you should always show your work. All right, now that you're familiar with the format of the math sections of the test, we're ready to explore some specific strategies. So be sure to check out more of the math lessons.